Welcome back to this epic comparison in the 1990s, the days where most long-range aircraft had four fuel guzzling engines and speed, and also the days where video quality was at 244p. Thus, I do apologize for the quality of this one, but the actual content behind this is indeed interesting, as two large American long-range white bodies are about to go head to head. The Boeing 777 vs the McDonnell Douglas MD-11 In the early 80s, the first generation of jet aircraft such as the DC-10 or Lockheed TriStar were nearing their retirement age, and aircraft manufacturers started to look at new designs to replace these models. Over in Europe, newly established Airbus started development of two new medium to long range white bodies, which went on to become the A340 and A330. However, in America, following some unfortunate events, McDonnell Douglas's reputation with the DC-10 was shaken. However, as the early DC-10s were nearing retirement age, McDonnell Douglas saw an opportunity and planned stretches and upgrades which would eventually be incorporated in the final MD-11. Boeing, however, was stuck and had to make a choice. With their recently launched 767, Boeing had a new and modern aircraft, but the 767 was designed to be a smaller medium-range widebody and wasn't enough to replace older long-range aircraft. Boeing initially planned an upgraded 767 variant, which would have higher seating capacity and be heavily upgraded, which was nicknamed 767X. However, following consultations with customers, it became clear that the airlines wanted an all-new large widebody, one that was more advanced and would deliver significant efficiency improvements over any of its competitors. Eventually, having worked with the world's major airlines, Boeing launched the world's largest widebody at the time, the Boeing 777. And so, three aircraft were fighting things out in this market segment, but things would go on to take a weird twist. Following the fall of McDonnell Douglas due to financial issues as well as issues with the workforce, they eventually merged with their neighbours over at Seattle, Boeing. However, following this merger, poor sales of the new MD-11 variant, which failed initially to meet performance guarantees, as well as competition with Boeing's own in-house 777, Boeing officially pulled the plug on MD-11 production in 2001 for the passenger variants. However, did the MD-11 pose a serious threat to the guys over at Seattle, and how was the performance of the MD-11? Well, that's what we'll find out in this epic one. But before we do, if you're new to the channel, a warm welcome and stay tuned for more epic comparisons and detailed analysis on the way. Right, let's kickstart this epic comparison. Also, do stay tuned for some incredible brand new aviation content starring soon on the Airplane Productions channel. While it is interesting to compare aircraft and analyse them, sometimes we should take a step back, enjoy and indulge in the beauty of aviation. Aviation content will nicely supplement the now weekly detailed analysis and epic comparisons to come. Right, let's kickstart this one. Starting with performance, the first generation of 777s that we are comparing today, the Dash 200ER model, flies 7,065 nautical miles while carrying 313 passengers in a two-class layout. Despite its heavier structure, MD-11 does get close. It carried 10 more passengers in a similar two-class layout, but flies 300 nautical miles short. All in all, despite having one fewer engine, the 777 delivers truly impressive performances right from the start.
Talking about engines, the 777 is a classic twin jet that is common today. The original 777 actually has three engine choices, either the Rolls-Royce Trent 800, Pratt & Whitney PW4000 or General Electric GE90-94B engines, the most powerful of which produces up to 93,700 pounds of thrust. The MD-11 though has engines that produce up to 62,000 pounds of thrust each and comes with two choices, either the PW4460 or the General Electric CF6 engines. While less powerful each, it does of course have one more engine, which might not be a good thing when we look at efficiency. Talking about efficiency, the MD-11 falls way behind, both in fuel efficiency and maintenance costs. As we can see from the newly introduced Airplane Productions chart of efficiency, something many of you requested for, burning 12.4 tons of fuel per hour on an average 9-hour flight, the MD-11 is a fuel guzzler. 777 burns 7 tons of fuel per hour on that same flight on average, which combined with its lower maintenance costs makes it a much cheaper aircraft to operate by nearly 50%. All in all, the 777 clearly outperforms the MD-11 in every aspect so far. Cabins? Well, the Boeing actually has an average cabin for the class, while MD-11 also has an average cabin. With its higher ceilings and wider aisles, the MD-11 gives passengers a more spacious view. That said, the 777 actually has a wider cabin overall, measuring 235 inches inside compared to 225 inches for MD-11. That said, as the aircraft has rather vertical cabin sidewalls, it does feel more spacious. MD-11 has fairly large windows, but are not as large as 777. The 777 is a quieter aircraft overall though, though not particularly quiet. 777-200ER features the first generation of Boeing interiors, though can be retrofitted with the newer Boeing Sky interior. That would add new mood lighting and curved overhead bins for a spacious feel. In a typical seating layout, the MD-11 has 17.5-inch seats in a 9 abreast configuration compared to 17 inches for a 10 abreast 777. All in all, the 777 does still have a more conventional cabin which sets the standards at that time. In terms of advantages and disadvantages, Boeing 777 is the most technologically advanced aircraft at the time. With fly-by-wire and a forward-thinking twin-engine configuration, this made the aircraft hugely efficient. 777 sets the benchmark for all future long-range white bodies to come. It also drove the aviation industry towards more efficient twin jets on long-haul routes, and its design made a huge impact on the aviation industry. It better did, given that it is an expensive aircraft to buy. MD-11 costs around 15-20% to less in acquisition costs and was actually the first aircraft of its category to reach the market, entering service with Finnair end of 1990. However, its lack of innovation and older three-engine design hindered the aircraft's fuel efficiency, while the aft center of gravity designed into the MD-11 for fuel efficiency made the aircraft difficult to handle in tricky conditions. Maintenance costs were also high due to the complex design, while pilots had to receive special training to fly the MD-11, raising pilot training costs. In terms of orders, the MD-11 received 200 orders, 100 short of the 300 initially planned, though 300 wasn't exactly an ambitious target either. Interesting to note, many customers actually cancelled or sold on their MD-11s due to performance issues upon entry to service. While McDonnell Douglas worked on fixing these to achieve the performance guarantees initially promised to customers, it came too late in 1995, and by then, American Airlines had already sold its passenger MD-11s to be converted to freighters with FedEx on the cancellation of 5 firm MD-11 orders and 15 options by Singapore 
airlines hurt the company's reputation. Singapore would eventually go on to take the 777, which in general is one of the most successful white bodies ever. The first generation 777-200 and 200ER variants will go on to sell 510 units. So then, is the MD-11 a true competitor to its Airbus and Boeing competitors? Well, no. MD-11 failed to deliver what it promised initially and was less efficient, less reliable and flew to shorter distances. Boeing's innovative spirit was clearly demonstrated in the 777, which is now the standard by which all new long-range white bodies are judged. This demonstrates the importance of staying relevant and competitive to always put innovation first in designing aircraft that bring truly outstanding and new value to our aviation industry. Thanks for watching till the end of this one and do stay tuned for more detailed analysis and epic comparisons on the way. Till we meet next time, wishing everyone a truly clear sky ahead.